Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Well, I was right. It'll never leave. I just got that song out of my head and it's back. It's freaking back. In February 2015, it was announced Disney was rebooting one of their most beloved classic shows, DuckTales. At first, people didn't know what to think of it. Reboots were everywhere and overdone. But at the same time, it's DuckTales. It seems like there's possibilities for it. Then the premiere of the intro was put on YouTube, and it was actually pretty damn good. It mixed modern animation with the classic Disney comic book style of the 50s. It was both a great update, as well as a great throwback. And then they did something even cooler. They released the first episode on YouTube. Yeah, you can go to Disney XD's YouTube and watch the premiere right now. Oh god, I didn't want to have to borrow someone's Disney Go password. I guess they're that confident that you'll like it and keep coming back for more. As you probably noticed, we've talked about DuckTales several times on this show, so it only makes sense to see if they were right. Is it as good as they're hyping it up to be, and will we come back for more? Let's find out by taking a look at the first episode of the DuckTales reboot. It opens with a seagull flying through the air and a bunch of feathered sailors shooing it away. They're all birds! How does this work? When is Pluto gonna walk goofy? It's never explained! We see some ducks on the water, though, as a boathouse containing Donald Duck and his nephews, Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Good morning, Uncle Donald. You can't wear this to your job interview. Who are presumably now little people in their 20s. Try to get Donald to his job interview so they can take the boat out and get into trouble. Where are you? I don't know. Crazy old bird. Did he just call her a crazy old broad? Crazy old bird. Someone's been talking to the cop from Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Better get looking for the old broad. All right, boys. We'll get to Cape Suzette and back before anyone realizes we're gone. I'll just put the in-joke counter over there and pray there's a Tailspin reboot. Ooh, maybe a live-action one. Donald realizes he can't leave them alone and decides to take them to Uncle Scrooge's house. You were supposed to get him out by 10 o'clock? Hubert! You were supposed to signal before you started the boat, Duford! We never get to do anything! Lubert? With business expanding in the Spoonerville and St. Canard markets... Yeah, now what? I'm just gonna get rid of that. Trust me, there's a lot of them. Scrooge finds the color has literally gone out of his life, as he doesn't really go on adventures anymore. He just mostly sits around and talks with his business executives, a group of vultures. You know, I'm only three minutes into the show and already it's more insanely clever than it needs to be. Fantastic. Scrooge is voiced by David Tennant, which is very fitting seeing how he's so cranky you could see him instructing someone to throw coffee in their own face. Throw in your face. Ah! Donald and Scrooge don't really get along, but Donald does manage to trick him into looking after the boys for just a few hours. And yes, by the way, those apples have diamonds in them. Really think about the number of questions that raises. Scrooge throws them in a room with a bag of marbles and orders his maid, Mrs. Beakley, to not let them interfere with anything. A gift from your great uncle. You will return them upon your departure. He's counted them. Okay, to be fair, marbles were like the batarang in the original. You could do a lot with them. So we're totally ditching this room, right? Yep, and I know just how to do it. Ah, see, they're already getting some ideas. Stupid doorknob, come up! You know, damn it, show, stop being so clever. They escape but are immediately captured by Beakley's granddaughter, Wable. What? I mean, Webby. What are your blood types? What's Donald really like? Who's the evil triplet? Tell me everything! Quackling hook! Okay, so while she does seem eerily similar to Gravity Falls' most popular character, there certainly are some differences. One, she has no friends where Mabel was a social butterfly. Are we friends now? If we say yes, will you let us live? <laughs> Good one, new best friend! Two, while she's excitable, she's also socially awkward due to Beakley being overly protective. Hi Granny, I'm spending the night at a friend's house so nothing is wrong! And three, she has kind of a violent edge. Who sent you? Ma Beagle? Glomgold? Answer me! And to be fair, most people would rather have a variation of Mabel than a variation of the original Webby. And apparently the writers thought the same thing as there's an arrow in a doll of her past design. Too soon. Can you get rid of her while you're at it? Scrooge feels down about the kids calling him a has-been, though. So he plans to go on an expedition to find Atlantis. I'm not has-been. I am an am now. A shift in currents may present a pathway to... Atlantis! Eh, just we didn't already search once with Disney. It got mixed results. Webby takes them to the Wing of Secrets. <coughs> yeah, I told you we're done with that. Where they start to wonder if Scrooge, as well as Donald, actually went on all the adventures they claim to go on. Donald Duck is one of the most daring adventurers. 
stars of all time! <laughs> and it's good to know that Roxanne is still getting job interviews after breaking up with Max. He did not trade up, by the way. He's dating some model. A butt-ugly CGI model. They accidentally open a chest, releasing the ghost of Captain Paycook and his steed, the Headless Manhorse. <laughs> I'm just gonna pretend I'm gonna sleep well tonight. He says he won't leave until he gets the head of Scrooge, so Scrooge obliges by giving him the head from one of his statues. I should have been more specific! Okay, as funny as that is, we never see that horse again. And if there's any character I want to know what happened to! But they release another ancient evil, a giant Chinese dragon. And much like the live-action reboot of Mulan, it's only there to consume riches. So it chases after Scrooge's gold. They get Scrooge's limo driver launch pad to pilot the plane to stop him. They use the Medusa gauntlet to turn him into stone and... Presumably murder him. And to be fair, they do show not having a head isn't the roadblock it used to be. Scrooge is impressed with their adventure-making shenanigans, and he wants them to join him in his search for Atlantis. But, in a hilarious twist, the job Donald was applying for belongs to Scrooge's mortal enemy, Glumgold, the second richest duck in the world. Welcome, new employees, to Glumgold Industries. Well, now we know what the CEO of Tilted Kill looks like. Gold wants to go after Atlantis to become the richest duck in the world, and he's hired a team of assassins to get it before Scrooge. Little Dewey's first steps. Against Huey in the playoffs, he was the boy. It's weird enough seeing Donald with modern day technology, but do his feathers have fingerprints to swipe? This show is asking so many questions I never thought I would ask. So Scrooge and the gang make it to Atlantis and find it's all upside down. The Atlanteans were so eager to build an epic city of wonders and death traps, they didn't stop to figure out a proper support structure and the whole thing fell into the sea! So they made that sign after the city sank? He must have died while carving it. Dewey wants to experience as much adventure as possible, but he finds being upside down sucks a lot of the action out of it. But Donald tries to save Dewey from himself. Give me a chance instead of lumping us all together in the backseat while you drive! Oh come on, nobody lumps you all together. Blue one. That actually is another cool element of the show. They tried to have Huey, Dewey, and Louie have a little bit more identity, so you can tell them a little bit more apart. I can't even think of the last time I saw an episode of anything where one gets individual focus as opposed to all of them sharing the same amount of time. That's fond remembering. But Glumgold gets the jewel first and finds out Donald is related to them and leaves them to drown. We gotta stop the water! <laughs> They're ducks. They can float. I knew I couldn't rush through with the rules. Stop! Scrooge was trying to keep me out of trouble. But I was so caught up in why is there a lamp on the floor? Hey, come on, you interrupted the Disney lesson. We had like 20 more seconds of synth music. That's the real jewel of Atlantis! That thing lit up when the trap was sprung. I bet my bottom dollar it's the power source that runs the city. And they said we never used those scripts from a TV show that never happened. Meanwhile, Glumgold's henchmen seem to really suck at what they do as Glumgold tries to blow Atlantis up with everybody inside. Mr. Duck, could we, uh, maybe bum a ride with you? We're just gonna be confused for Ninja Turtle villains if we don't get more screen time. They of course help them out and show up Glumgold with the real treasure. Mr. McDuck, how do you respond to claims- Wow, Roxanne got another job pretty quick! Applying for henchwoman and ending up as a TV reporter? Life's funny that way. So, through lame excuses not really needed to justify kids going on adventures. These boys will get into trouble, so maybe you can teach them how to get out of trouble. Can't some caregivers just be bad people? It's agreed that the boys can stay with Scrooge, especially after their houseboat blows up. I may have left the engine running in the houseboat. The circle is now complete. Reclusive adventure capitalist Scrooge McDuck is back, solving mysteries and rewriting history. ch 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 chippendales Rescue Ray! Oh, I had it! So Dewey is happy to know that his family is so adventurous and that he truly belongs. 
I'll just celebrate this incredibly serviceable ending by drinking out of my favorite and most expensive champagne glass with my favorite and most expensive champagne inside, <laughs> as I will do now. Mom? Do you know how close I was to dropping that? Mom? As in parents? Huey, Dewey, and Louie have parents? Has that ever been addressed in a cartoon ever? I just assumed they were clones! Spawned in a laboratory of comedic sidekicks! We're actually gonna do this? It's finally gonna be explained who Huey, Dewey, and Louie's parents are? DuckTales! Woohoo! This reboot is everything you would want it to be. It's funny, it's creative, it's modern, it's retro, it's classic, it's new, it has great animation with charming characters. It's clearly combining old school Disney adventures like their comics and the Disney Afternoon with newer Disney adventures like Star vs. the Forces of Evil and Gravity Falls. And they mix perfectly. I know it's only a first episode, but it's made me an immediate fan, going from slightly curious to incredibly intrigued. I can't wait to see where this goes, how they represent old characters, and how they introduce new characters. If you want to see how to do a reboot right, go over to Disney XD's YouTube right now and watch DuckTales. Woo friggin' who. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it so you don't have to.